guys my name is arnavi mitra and i'm back with my another video so as you know i'm a digital specialist engineer at infosys so in this video i am going to explain like whenever we are doing some code uh, suppose in an exam we are uh, writing some code what should be our approach like uh, how we should decide like what will be the time complexity like Sometimes you may have faced like uh, you see the code is uh, seems easier. You did some n square code, and after that, uh, when you are submitting, you will get uh, TLE because, and after that, you will come to know. Oh, then uh, we should uh, try for a linear time algorithm. Or oh, order of n logic we should do. So how can we avoid that at very first? Like. Uh, we should decide should it be a n square or n cube or 2 to the power n or a linear time algorithm. So how we will decide that I am going to explain. So whenever there is some code there should be this example sets and another thing may, uh, we may have missed that is the constants which uh, we are provided. Like for every code there should be some constants. Uh, that we may have overlooked but this play a very vital role how, so how that I, uh, I will explain for example I have taken a very uh, easy code from lead code that is uh, 1385 number find the distance value between two arrays so it just says there are two array array 1 and array 2 and the distance value is defined as the number of elements of uh, first array such that absolute difference between the first array and second array for any elements of the second array it will be less than equals to D. So I will uh, quickly show you the example and uh, for example 4, 5, 8 the first array uh, elements and second array elements are this and distance variable is defined as 2. So for 4, if I like take the absolute difference uh, from all the uh, uh, elements of array 2, it's greater than 2. For 5, also it's greater than 2. And for 8, uh, some values are less than 2. So we need to, like our condition is uh, like, uh, it should be greater than equals to 2. Like for all the elements of J, the absolute value, uh, like we need, uh, like it's clearly saying that that not an element uh, from array of J that is uh, less than equals to 2. So like for this example, 4 and 5, there are two values uh, present for which like every uh, absolute difference we are getting that is greater than 2. So the code is very easy now it's your like now what will you do like the first thing we are thinking that is a brute force approach that is a order of n square approach for every element we will see for every element. Now our uh, first check should uh, be can we do it for n square now we will go to the constraints and we saw that constraint is very much low that is only 500 so 500 into 500 that is very low so we can easily go for order of n approach so we should not think more and we should just code so i have uh, written a very easy code you can see for every element i have checked all the elements of the second array and if like value is less than d we are not going to count it and if val uh, value is greater than d so we will just count it and we will return the count so this is very easy question and as per the constraint we can see we can go for n square question now uh, i will give you another example that is the climbing stair uh, that is uh, like i have implemented using dynamic programming and I will show you like uh, we know that this is the uh, one of the same as Fibonacci series. Like it's uh, saying that it's time you can climb one or two steps. So what will be the how many distinct ways you can do and the exam will be that uh, pre summation of previous two. So the first 
thing you can think like why don't we are going for a recursion and why are we going for dynamic programming and i have also explained like why recursion is costly like every time we are calling two functions so like time complexity can go to 2 to the power n now if i check the constant that is 45 and 2 to the power 45 is a big number so we can't go for recursion it can give a tle so it is better we just like go for dynamic programming approach so my approach is only this i'm just implementing uh uh dynamic programming using only a linear uh, approach now another code is this permutation uh, i will begin given an array and i have to print i mean i have to return all the permutation of the array so it is a very famous backtracking type of question and here i can see the length of uh, array is le uh, less than equal to 6 to 2 to the power 6 we can go to that so as it is a backtracking question we know that we are going to use uh, recursion and if i like check the constant it's uh, very low like 2 to the power 6 is okay we can go for it so without thinking much we will simply go for the uh recursion approach and that is uh, in backtracking uh, recursion approach so i will just uh, uh explain you the code that uh, it is not that much tough like uh, for every uh, element suppose uh, uh my approach is like first we are given one two three so uh, uh at first like uh this is the base case uh because the array we are putting in the uh main vector that will be of length 3 so when we got uh, an array of length 3, length 3 we can simply push into the actual uh, 2d array or the 2d vector and then like if it's not so like for every element of the array let, like first we will uh, check if we have already pushed that uh, push that element in the array if not then we will push that element we will call the function again so that it uh, go for next elements and after it come back uh, it will just pop back so it may be seems tough uh, maybe i will uh, later in later point of view will create some uh, videos on backtracking so for now as uh, this video is only for like what type of uh, um algorithm we should choose or we should go for so i'm keeping it very short and i'm just telling you what should be your approach so whenever you are in any exam or in any uh like you are giving some code so always check the constraint first and then decide what kind of algorithm or like what kind of approach you should take if you can go for n square then don't waste time go for n square and if you see the constraint is very uh, high like uh, suppose the um, value of n is up to 10 to the power 5 10 to the power 7 so you should always go for a linear uh, algorithm linear time algorithm but if value is like 100 500 you can go for n square and if you are going to 2 to the power n then value should be very less so hopefully uh, my uh, explanation is clear so if you like the video you can like and uh, also comment if you have any uh you if you want anything you can let me know in the comment section and if you like my channel you can subscribe it and i have also created a telegram group uh, where you can post your doubts or anything like if uh, you have some suggestion on video which i should make you can uh, join that uh, telegram group and also uh, you can connect with me there so thank you